us is Pastor Steve Ritchie of Global Impact Ministries. This is a new ministry started called Apostolic Christian News. News from a Christian perspective. Today on the show I have part two of Brother Robert Pompliano, who is a seasoned elder and minister in the Lord. I believe he's been in Pentecost for getting close to 20 years now. Yes. And last uh, time he shared his some of his testimony, how he became apostolic in the faith, and how the Lord had led him into the fullness of truth and the importance of water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to be following up with some more of Brother Pompliano's testimony about how God has led him. So Brother Pomp, again, it's good to have you on our show. Thank you, Brother Richie, for having me here. And uh, I call, Brother, call him Brother Pomp as a, a loving, short way of saying Brother Pompliano. I apologize, I keep doing that. And he calls me Brother Rich as you know, a loving way of uh, talking to each other. We're so used to chatting with each other, but you know, we just we're just real friendly. And we just have making ourselves at home right. today. And we want you to feel at home when you're at home. And uh, today, I just would like to ask Brother Pompliano a little bit of background again about himself. Anything you want to share about your background? A little bit more about yourself. To introduce yourself. To well, uh, as Brother Richie said, I'm, my name is Robert Pompliano. I've been serving Christ for about 20 years, uh, give or take a few months. Uh, a long time ago, when I was a child, before I had the fullness of truth, I was uh, in a, uh, another denomination and I had received the Holy Ghost. And when I received that Holy Ghost, I didn't have anyone to lead and guide me, Brother Rich. Um, it was very overwhelming and overpowering. Uh, it, it, it caused me much turmoil because it affected my life. It says that when the Spirit of God comes upon us, it says that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And my mind got renewed, and I had no guide. Okay, I had no one to help me understand how to live for Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, once I met some people of the apostolic faith, and my life was uh, forever altered because I started to add to my relationship and this experience I had, I started to add the Word of God. It says we must worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. And there's a lot of times where I was unable to understand what was happening. And my ministry, I believe, was delayed uh, because I had to mature. I had to come to an understanding of how the Spirit of God operates, how the Word of God is to be used. Uh, it says it's a sword of the Spirit. It says right. it's, it's dividing to the soul and the marrow right. of, of a man or a woman. And, and you can be reckless with that, uh, yes, that ability and with those discerning uh, uh, words of knowledge and things that you might experience. And we have to be careful when we are learning and we're supposed to learn with our brothers and our sisters. Uh, and we're supposed to really use them as the platform to express ourselves and to work and, and to be open with each other. Uh, and when doing that, that's going to allow us to have a safety net for failure. And a lot of times what we end up doing is we end up working on the, the loss, the people who have no relationship with God, and we end up injuring them. And so, you know, I've learned in my 20 years uh, of walking with God that to be careful, to have loving kindness and tender mercies, uh, to not just be uh, aware, but to be concerned about mm -hmm. how you address and how you say things. Right. Obviously, sometimes you have to say a thing stern because you have right. to say a thing stern. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you have In to love. be experienced mm -hmm. to let those things come right. forth. Uh, and experience doesn't come from my age. It doesn't come from my time in God. It comes right. from my ex exercising my, myself in righteousness, is what it says. It says to exercise yourself in righteousness. Uh, to exercise the Word of God, to exercise your prayer life, to exercise things that are of the Spirit, to exercise things that are of the life that we're living. And when we exercise that Word of God, we are going to um, enter in to a place of maturity with a lot more speed. And, yes. And, and if we don't exercise, we delay yes. maturity. Right. And uh, some things are only learned by the process of time, but some things are learned by the process of exercise. And we have to be careful how to balance that. Overall, in a nutshell, Brother Pompliano was basically saying that 
You can be out there in any kind of spirit-filled, charismatic type church. God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. He will even use you in the gifts of the Spirit, like God right. used you back in the time when you were 14 years old, 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, God used, I believe, in healing and yes. a word of knowledge. So God can use, He will use everyone that's filled with His Spirit. Uh, that's right. But He wants to bring you into maturity. He wants to bring you into uh, true Christian discipleship. And it begins by true, good apostolic teaching from the Word of God, true Christian baptism, not just true spirit-filled baptism, but true water baptism into the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, and so we're going to let Brother Pompliano have the floor here to, to tell us how God has led him into Christian maturity by being in the apostolic faith. From the day that you came into the apostolic faith, how has God led you into much greater maturity than you ever had when you were in the charismatic faith? You know, when I say charismatic, the Catholic charismatic movement about 20 years ago or so. Correct. So, uh, where I'm at now in my walk with, with God, to talk with you um, openly, correctly, is to let you understand that there's a little bit of background you have to understand before we can talk about what is knowledgeable for us to do today as Christians. Okay? Um, like Brother Richie said, I came up out of a charismatic Christian Catholic background. And I didn't have the training I needed. Since being in the Apostolic Faith, they taught me about the basics of the Bible, the basics of the Word of God. And when I say basics, there's fundamental truths that we have to have. This is everything Jesus Christ said to him was hanging from the law and the prophets. Okay, we have to have those fundamental truths in our life. Amen. And the fundamental truths being in our life really allow us to uh, exercise correctly when we're operating in the Spirit. Not having those fundamentals in the base of your relationship allows you to, you kind of get off task, you can get off the mark, you can not be correct. Those things anchor you to the Word of God. Those things anchor you to, to spiritual development. And it's kind of like you can't go from the first grade to the second grade until you learn the material in the first right. grade. So we want to realize that God's training us. And when you're in the apostolic faith, they're one of the great things that they have is a good platform in most churches that I've ever visited. They have a great platform or a good platform mm -hmm. for taking you from kindergarten through to through into being a disciple. Now, being a disciple is really where I've load, left my, uh, I'm letting, I should say, my ministry mature mm -hmm. and where I want my ministry to blossom is because being a disciple is the most important yes, place. Yes. Okay? A lot of people look at the pastorship, or they look at evangelism, or they look at being an apostle, or they look at foreign missions, and, and all those things are a function of the body. But Jesus himself said, and Paul wrote it, okay, and he said, I gave some pastors, some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, right. and some evangelists for the edifying of the church. Right. The church is the function. The work of the ministry. Right. The church is the yes. function. That means the bride. Yes. Okay. So the disciple is actually the most important position in the scripture. It's the most important position that Jesus ever had. Because he says, I'm not going to be here, but I'm going to be in you. Right. And you're going to go and do greater works than I have. So the teacher was teaching us right there right. that we need to take up that, we say take up that cross and follow him. Well, it's not just the cross, it's the understanding that you have to be under the burden. What's the burden? The burden is to enter into a discipleship walk that's like Jesus. Jesus said to go preach the gospel to all creation and to make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And so Brother Pacquiano, you would say that the most apostolic churches tend to teach all things that Christ has commanded through discipleship programs. Uh, of course, we can always improve, but we're, you know, this is exactly where Brother Pompliano is, is felt led by God to improve that and, and home in on what a true disciple is all about. Could you tell us a little bit about your ministry as far as making disciples? Yeah, uh, we have begun, uh, myself and a couple of other brothers, uh, we just, uh, opened up a, a web page, which is going to be a teaching portal. You're going to see videos like this uh, coming in January of 2019. Um, 
and you're going to be able to understand how to be a disciple today. Okay? And I mean that not in word and in book, but I want to take the word and go out yes. and do Great. what we're supposed to see. Okay? Uh, apostolic, uh, Pentecostal movement throughout these United States has taken on many things. But I'm, I ask myself constantly, we started out in Azusa Street, okay, and if, a lot, if you do your research on it and you don't know about Azusa Street, read about Azusa Street. And you saw a melting pot of people that love Jesus Christ come together and you saw the Spirit of God moving. Mm -hmm. And when that Spirit of God started to move, things happened. Healing, miracles, right. signs and wonders, okay? That is supposed to be the norm. Among the Pentecostals. Among anyone who has apps that has a relationship with Jesus Christ, which means they've repented of their sins, they've been baptized in Jesus' name, they've been filled with Holy Ghost. And I don't want to relay that foundation again, but once you have that one more in your life, it's your to speak up. Yeah, that's good. We're gonna, I wanted to say that we're in a public place, so this is not a professional studio, I have to say that again. So we're in a public place, so we're just going to you know, speak. So you're supposed to be able to take up the cross and follow him. Or what that cross means, what did Jesus do? And he sat with the public, and so he sat with the, the sinners, and he sat with those that were of the mindset of the Bible, and they had the word of God. They said, you can't, this man speaks as though he is God. Mm -hmm. And they were very angry at him. So what you... How does that look in 2018? And how does that function? How do we do as the Christians of 2018 go into 2019 and start to turn this society, this world, upside down? Amen. And that's what we have to do. And mm -hmm. disciples of Jesus Christ, I'm pr proud to be on Brother Richie's uh, Apostolic News Station. And I look forward to more things coming in the future, more information being laid out. It's so wide. We need to tell people that God is and God can instead of worrying about will God. Will God's will already is that he should. He said, I've come that you might have life and more abundantly. So what would stop us as apostolics to proclaim the goodness of God? If someone's lame, you can get up. Silver and gold have I none, but as I have, I give to you. Rise up and walk. Okay, being sensitive to the Spirit, hearing the Spirit, and then knowing that God's speaking to you, to that situation, and then speaking it forth prophetically to be what? You're going to be like Christ. I think what's a little confusing to many is there are many Pentecostals. I've visited churches, brother. I don't yes, recommend uh, new converts go around visiting churches, but I've visited churches. I've seen the gifts of the Spirit and Pentecostal churches that were not fully apostolic, meaning baptized in Jesus' name for remission of sins and believe in the oneness of God. But I know when God's Spirit is poured out, He always operates wherever we open our faith towards Him. If we open our faith in the Spirit and open our faith in the gifts, you can be moving in the gifts of the Spirit without even being baptized, right? Because Jesus said, many shall prophesy in my name, cast out demons in my name, and do wonderful things in my name, and He's going to say, depart from me. Ye that work iniquity, literally lawlessness. So we have to obey the laws of God. Now, people say, oh, you're a legalist because the laws of God. The apostles said that we are under the law of liberty. There are some commandments. They that are Christ and truly love God keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing. So there are commandments in New Testament Christians. You got all kinds of mumbo jumbo, crazy Christian out there. Oh, there's no commandments, just love Jesus. We have to have the boundaries in our life, that we can't cross certain boundaries as, as true Christians and disciples. We must live holy lives. And so I want to finish up on this quick video, uh, asking Brother Pompliano uh, how God has led him since he became apostolic in faith to share the gospel here in Fort Myers. Some of the things in his testimonies, God has led him in a very supernatural, demonstrative way. Would you feel to share a little bit about that as we conclude? Yeah, the biggest thing I can share uh, that we have to do is um, is keep it simple, okay? Um, when you're sharing the scripture, when you're loving on people, when you're working with people, there are fundamentals that have to be done. Going house to house, being with people, letting them see your goodness in God, and yes. letting them see your failures and your weaknesses. Don't try to always look so perfect, because <laughs> they're trying to get there. 
And if you look like everything's perfect all the time, now I'm not saying go out and be reckless and sin. I'm right. saying I'm saying if you're if you're having a bad day, don't try to hide that you're having a bad day, but don't talk about how horrible. Well, thank you, brother. I might hate that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but you don't. But you know what he's saying. I think in a nutshell is don't pretend that you're perfect because none of us are. That's none right. of us are. We all have flaws. But uh, don't try to make yourself to be out somebody you're not. Admit, and, you know, that you're not perfect either. Don't walk like a holy and thou pompous in your pride, like you're super spiritual, because none of us are. Go and, ahead, and teach the love of God. Teach the basics of the scripture. Teach baptism in Jesus' name. Teach the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The pinnacle of this relationship is to be in God's presence. Mm. Because when you're done with this life, and this old man falls off, mm. you're going to be in God's presence. Amen. So if you don't like God's presence now, how will you like it then? <laughs> okay. How are you going to like it then? The angels of God are always shouting, holy, 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 and the pillars of heaven, so to speak, you know, are shake. I mean, the God's presence is powerful. So if you don't like to worship God and with a loud voice now, when you get to heaven, you're going to want to walk out of heaven. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and don't take this wrong, but I firmly believe you can leave your second estate just like the angels had to leave their first estate, you're promised to go to heaven. But if you want to leave, your free will is not going to be removed from you. Right. The sin right. of the flesh will be removed where you wouldn't want to leave. But if you've got something messed up in your spirit, God's going to take you there. But I don't want to get on a tangent. But I want to what say, else do you feel the want to share with us, brother? Well, when you're going into those homes, you're working with people and you're loving on them, you know, make it simple. Keep it simple. And then... The simplicity of this is when you get something from God, when you feel you're moved on by God, remember this. You can talk about the subject. You don't have to necessarily talk about what the information you got. Let the person understand that you know what's going on in their life by God's revelation and let them reveal it. And I'll give you a short story about this. Go ahead, okay? bro. One time I was walking the street ministry. We were doing outreach in the local streets, and we were talking to all manner of people. And I ran across a young lady that God gave me a word of knowledge on. Me. And as I revealed this word of knowledge, I was very direct in my immaturity. And I gave it just like I got it. Now sometimes there's a time for that. And sometimes there's not. And you have to know the difference. And only doing it multiple times and having a failure, like sharing a failure, not a, not, a, uh, not a win necessarily. And this woman, I gave it just like I got it. And when I gave it just like I got it, she stood up on her toes and yelled at me and said, you don't tell me a lie. And I said, I believe not. And I knew I was in the spirit. I knew I was right in the information. And I came at her again with another piece of information to back up the first piece of information. And she got more angry. And the third time, she got more angry. So I finally said, I probably need to leave this alone. And I backed away. And I told her that God loved her and God wanted to help her. And she went away very discouraged and very angry. One year later, a friend of mine came to me that had a ship lady on the street also. And he said, this woman... I told her about our church community, and she said, oh, you know this such and such, she was talking about me. And he said, yeah, I know such and such. She said, that man is, a, is not a God, he lied to me. He told me all these things about my life, and it was not true. And I said, and my friend came to me to tell me, he said, I want to let you know these people are saying these things about you. I said, no, my friend, that is true, it was of God. And I said, but I'll pray about it, but it was of God. Well, three more years passed, mm -hmm. and the same friend ran into the same woman again, mm -hmm. and her life had gone to a very low place, and she was very hurt. But she came to my friend, and she said, I spoke bad about the man of God, wow. about the prophet that God sent me. Mm -hmm. And now maybe she didn't say it in those words, but she was saying, go to that man that told you all those things about me, and tell him I'm sorry, because I'm he was right, and I didn't want to hear it. Right. But that's the sensitivity you won't know when this experience has come to you. Sometimes you might be right, but they can't hear it. So it's better to be loving and not be right. 
Of course, brother, you know, you look at the Old Testament time where the prophets gave out the words and it's not what they wanted to hear, so they rejected it. I think that's kind of a similar example. And I believe that God wanted you to share those words, you know, maybe you could have been a little more softer and kinder, but God wanted to hear those words. And sometimes when you hear a word from God, it's not what you want to hear. People get offended. Even when you counsel, advise other pastors, even the body of Christ, sometimes you give a counsel, a word, and they don't want to hear it. They get all offended. But later on down the road, they realize that counsel was good. And sometimes, you know, we need to be around prayerful men of God, prayerful people that surround us, that will give us a good word of advice. In the multitude of counselors, there's safety. And I encourage all brothers and sisters out there, uh, whether you're a pastor, elders, deacons, whatever your place is in the body of Christ, surround yourself with anointed brothers and sisters who are willing to, to give good counsel. A true friend is going to tell you the truth. Jesus spoke the truth, and he offended the Pharisees. I don't know how many times, but I'd rather have somebody tell me the truth than to tell me a lie that's going to deceive me. In t towards the pit of hell. I want somebody to, that the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So we need the true counsel of God, the true word of God this time. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, a prophetic man like Brother Pompliano to surround myself with so that I can have the word of God imparted to me and not somebody that's going to be a so called friend who just likes to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, just give me what I want to hear, flatter me. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of preachers going out there flattering each other, not telling the truth because they, well, they want to offend nobody for political position or maybe in an organization. But I'd rather have somebody tell me the truth under the anointing of God than flatter me and make me think I'm all right. Tell me my flaws. Confront me so I can be a better disciple of Jesus Christ. Because you can't be a true disciple of Jesus Christ unless you're willing to change into his image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And brethren, it's not just the Spirit of the Lord, it's also your, your being a part of the body of Christ, as members in particular. And as we're members of the body of Christ, iron sharpens iron. And this, in our fellowship, my yeah. fellowship, Brother Pompeiano, helps me to be a better disciple of Jesus Christ. And so, so when he speaks maybe even a hard word to me, I'm going to take that to prayer. I'm going to pray. I'm not going to say, oh, you're a false prophet. I want to, because you know, a lot of times we, the true prophets spoke things that people didn't want to hear. Any last comments, Brother Pompeo? Yeah, and, and understand what Brother Richie is recounting is being the other opposite of truth, okay? In other words, I said one thing one way. He's saying, don't be afraid to say it. And I'm going to say, I didn't say be careful because I'm saying not saying the truth. But sometimes you can word it differently. Jesus right. did that at the well. Mm -hmm. He said, you have a married woman once, but how many times? And she said, five times. Okay, he could have just came out and said, you got way too many husbands and you need to repent. He, already, he knew that, but he brought her, he led her by right. the goodness of God. So what I'm saying is in this particular lady's right. life, I could have said things like, hey, did this and this happen in your life? Is these things that are keeping you from the presence of God? The point could have right. still relayed the truth, but in I a softer that. tone. Same thing with preaching. The same you thing. can preach the word from the pulpit and preach it with a wrong spirit. You can preach the truth in love, or you can preach the truth with a with a maybe a condescending or maybe a mean spirit. And if you want to have results, the Bible says we are to speak the truth in love. And I see so often on YouTube and even comments under even some of my videos, even apostolic brethren, sometimes we we are sarcastic, we're speaking truth in condemnation. And Jesus Christ did not come to condemn the world, but, but that the world would make, have life. I was once a Trinitarian. My brother here was once a Trinitarian. Right. If, if the people that were talking to us were, had that attitude, we would have run, right, brother? We would have ran Amen. away. And so my prayer is even the hardest-hearted Trinitarian, an, an, an Aryan, Unitarian, Sicilian, that we will exemplify the love of Christ. Christ is in us who gives us the power to love that. And Jesus said, love your enemies. And we need to weep and pray, even for our enemies, even for those who oppose the gospel, that one day they'll come to that glorious life. With That's right. But Paul said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this age has blinded the minds of those that do not believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We believe Jesus Christ is the image of God the Father. He's the only image of our Heavenly Father we're ever going to see. And when we worship Jesus, we're worshiping the Father. When we see Jesus, we're seeing the Father. It's not three God persons, three minds, three hearts, three God wills. 
And so I'm so glad that we're in the apostolic faith. When we say apostolic, we're talking about the faith of the first century apostles, not going to the creeds of Christendom and all the traditions and lies that came later. We want to be genuine first century Christian that if Peter and John were in this room, they would be saying, Amen. We don't want to be, oh, we got to get the Chalcedonian Creed. We got to go to the fifth century Catholic Church to say Amen to us. Now we want to, be to have the first century church say Amen to what we believe in. Amen. Well, Brother Pop, it's, uh, Papiano, it's a blessing to have you again on the show. Or maybe we'll have you more. I, my goal is to have pastors on this uh, show as well, local pastors. And some pastor friends up north of mine will probably come down from time to time. I'll go up there. But we're going to have interviews and make this apostolic Christian news about what's going on in the body of Christ. Different pastors around the country be involved and uh, just share what's going on and words of encouragement for everyone out there. Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Brother. God bless you, you again. Love you. Love you.